Check, 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 one, two, check. Ladies and gentlemen, we are live. The Coffee and Biscotti Show. I'm your host, Crew Mel Bellissimo. It is 12 o'clock EST, Friday, September the 17th. And well, my friends, it's been a hell of a week. I got something I want to share with you. Many, many moons ago, somebody said to me once that on September 21st of 2021 was going to be a monumental day on the planet and that it would be something powerful, a powerful day. And as we approach this day, I have to be honest with you, I'm feeling the energy of something big coming. I don't know what it is, guys. I really don't. All I know is that yesterday was an absolutely shitty day, like as shitty as it comes. You know, my mom calls me. She says, son, you got to take me to the hospital. And so what happens is, is little Stalina, she has to go to the hospital because she's not feeling well. And, And it was just, you know, you know, you've heard of Murphy's Law, that anything that can go wrong will go wrong. Well, yesterday was the day, my friends. And it's a perfect segue, if I if I may, to today's guest and to today's uh, today's show. Um, I hope that wherever you are in the world, that you are uh, you know feeling great, and if you're not, that you have something that you can use to help you come out of that energy. And I hope that this week, if it had it was struggling, that it's almost over. And we are in the weekend now. We are in the home stretch of the week. And that you just know that this too shall pass, that this energy shall pass. I say this because I'm really honored to be on today's show with my guest. I've known the guest for 30 years. That's right. 30 years. Maybe some of you, some of you watching the show are not even 30 years old. I've known this guy longer than some of you have been on planet earth. That's the truth. But I'll tell you guys, you're going to hear a story that's going to bring tears to your eyes. A man who, when you talk about trial and tribulation, when you talk about trauma, has lived experience in all of these. Through all the challenging times he's been through, he continues to move forward. He continues to overcome. He continues to show his light to the world. And he's doing it not just by talking. He's doing it with his action. So if you can take a look, you see my new gear that I have on, courtesy of Hope Be The Cure, which is the uh, charitable uh, foundation started by my guest. But, you know, let's talk relationships for a moment. What is the most difficult relationship that you have? Some might say, it's with your mother or your father. Some might say it's with your siblings. Some might say it's with your loving relationship. My friends, what I believe is that the most difficult relationship is with yourself. Because we have an unruly roommate, and that's called the mind. Someone said to me once, if spirit is up there and your heart is here, then this is in the way. And my next guest has had to deal with this and to transcend the mind, to overcome the mind and look into his heart, to look at his spirit and say, I'm more than what's in my mind. I'm greater than what's in my mind. Because it is by will alone that I set my mind in motion. And it is through this ritual that this man has overcome some of what I would say is the most challenging things that
that you could ever face being here on planet Earth, being here in the physical 144,000 rays away from whatever you call God. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm very excited for today's show because he's an inspiration to many. He's going around and speaking with many about addictions, about mental and sexual abuse. He has completely changed his life around. He had the tenacity to get through these difficult times and is now spreading his light and his love to the rest of the world. So ladies and gentlemen, please please join me as we welcome the man, the myth, the legend, Mr. Joe Capone. <laughs> God bless you, bro. Thank you, man. Thanks for having me. Joe Capone in the house. <laughs> Holy shit balls. <laughs> Holy shit balls. For real. That's a nice shirt you got on there, bro. Thanks, bro. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> we got the twin thing going on today. The twin, yeah, we're twinning today. <laughs> hey, Putin Nation, did you see that, bro? That's getting prepared for a show, baby. Putin <laughs> Nation, look at that, bro. We even have the same shirt on. Different cities, five hours away. That's okay, baby. Twinning it. Exactly, Putin Nation. Joe, thank you so much for being on the show, brother. It's Thanks such a pleasure to have you, bro. Very humble. Thank you. So, Joe, I mean, first of all, I mean, holy shit, we got lots to catch up on for sure. But, uh, yeah. you know, I just want to say, you know, I, I need everybody to know this, that, you know, Joe and I went to high school together. Like, <laughs> Joe was like the man. If you needed uh, shit, you just went to Joe. Joe could get you anything. Joe was the guy. <laughs> and and it's funny. It's funny. I say that as, as if, you know, like, but but there is there's such there's so much more that's hidden. That's deep within Joe being the man. I mean, you know, I mean, I'm sure that the audience is going to say, wow, does this Joe Capone, is he really any relation to Al Capone? <laughs> and I'm thinking, well, <laughs> I'll tell you something. The way, the kind of love, the kind of life that Joe lived in, in, in his previous life, he might as well have been related to Al Capone, let me tell you, because he was the man. That's the truth. But Joe, you know, you've come on to the show. I know you're a busy guy, so I'm super grateful that you've taken this time with us and to our, our audience and to our, our friends in the Twitchiverse. But I, I want to start off, Joe, like I do every show. And I just want to say that, and I repeat this every week, and I will say it every week for as long as this show continues. And that is, is that I created this show, Joe, because of the idea of sharing stories of people about their passions and their transformations. And Joe, you really embody that. You embody yeah. transformation. You embody passion because you have been through some extremely difficult times in your life and you have transcended those. You have, you have said, those are not what's going to keep me down. I'm bigger. I'm better than this. I'm stronger than this. And more importantly, light is more powerful than the dark. And even though that you've been in the dark, your light is stronger. So what I'd like to do, Joe, is I'd like to start every show with, you know, paint us a picture, Joe. Who's who's this magic man? Who's yeah. Joe Capone? Well, there's no magic in it, man. There's, you know what? I made the decision finally to listen to that voice, to listen to the voice saying, ask for help. Ask for help. Stop trying to be something you're not. Uh, it's easy to go the short road. It's easy to do the wrong things. It's easy just to say, you know what? Fuck it. Why would I put the work in for when I could do it the easier way? Easier way. But in the end, the easier way is the hardest way because it brings you down and it weighs you down. And to get back up each time, that, that mindset keeps you down and is heavier and heavier and heavier. So what myself, I'll speak for me, what I needed to do is keep fueling myself in order to move forward. Because I had fear. Fear of what? Fear of life. Fear of being loved. I needed everyone to like me because I was afraid of not being liked. So I people pleased and people pleased. And I forgot about Joe. Very long, long time ago, I forgot about Joe. Wow. 
Holy shit. In the first three minutes, there's so much to unpack of this show. <laughs> Holy shit. Well, well, listen, Joe, let's start at the beginning, bro, because th this is awesome. But I just want to give out a little shout out to just Rob Official. Uh, Rob, I love you, brother. Uh, thanks for stopping by. Uh, it's always a pleasure to see you on the stream here, brother. And just know that uh, I'm sending my love to you. So, uh, But Joe, start from the beginning, bro. Like, where did you grow up? Uh, you know, talk, take us through it. Okay, well, um, you know, when I was a kid, me and my family, we lived in the Christie Pitts area at a very young age. Um, we lived with my grandfather and my, my other aunt and uncle and my cousins. And, you know, it started from there. I could remember at a very, very young age, like, you know, talking with my therapist and doing some recollections, how there was a piece of jolt that already was looking for trouble, looking for looking for someone to say, what are you doing? Come here. What's wrong? What's wrong? What's bothering you? Um, you know, ask me why. I don't remember why. I don't. But I do remember being the kid, you know, going in the closet and rolling up fake cigarettes at five years old. I could remember these things. Wow. Um, you know, from Christy Pitts, we ended up moving out to Jane and Shepherd. Um, Jane and Shepherd was where I spent most of my, my youth. Um, Spend Valley represent. Spen Valley, Gilsburg. Um, you know what? And my dad at a very young age, you know, God bless him, uh, at a very young age, you know, seeing, seeing the area, the street life, and, and, you know, people just hanging out at parks and stuff like that. I mean, not everybody's a bad person. They're just, they're out there, right? They don't got the support. My father, he put me out there. At three and a half, four years old, he put me in skates. He got me to the arena, Downs Arena. Jana Wilson, he got me there. He got me, I, I could remember like him dressing me up 5.30 in the morning, me sleeping like a, and just, I don't want to go. No, we got to go. We got to go. And, you know, breeding me into this amazing hockey player. Like, I got to give props to my dad. I mean, like, I played hockey like a champion. Like, I broke records. I was, I got to say it. I'm going to say it because I believe in myself. I was phenomenal. I was scoring nine goals a game. It was like I was being watched at a very, very young age. I don't want to say a lot of pressure because I was a kid. I was having lots of fun, right? For me, scoring goals, every goal I scored, I got a pack of, a pack of hockey cards, OP cheese. <laughs> so that was, my, that was my goal. That was my paycheck. And, uh, you know, sometimes my dad would say, my God, I got to buy you 12 packs, 12 packs of cards. But, yeah, that was, that was my life at a very young age. And, um, you know, I, I, I still only spoke. I didn't speak much English. I spoke Italian because in my household, at my grandfather's house, we spoke Italian. So even me going to school, starting school, I didn't speak English. I was talking to the teacher, posandare to the bathroom. Like this teacher was looking at me. I mean, what's all these kids out to lunch? But um, yeah, man. I mean, like yeah. I remember these kind of things. And you know, then my dad putting me in soccer. He didn't want me a part of those streets. Yeah. And. Um, you know, I had hockey and soccer, and soccer, I blew it out of the water. I was a phenomenal soccer goalie. Again, I'm going to pat myself on the back. I put effort into everything I did when I was a kid because that was, that's what was shown to me. Um, you know, and at about at about seven, eight years old, you know, you start meeting other people. There was this, this person that lived in the neighborhood that would walk me to school. Walk me to school and trusted my parents, you know, knowing that, you know, they're neighbors, they know the family. Whatever. And you know what? I'm gonna, before I even start off by the sexual abuse, I'm going to say one thing. It took me a long time to do this, but I forgive this person. Why? Because he didn't know any better. He was just repeating a behavior. How can a kid do something so bad unless it was taught? So before anything, I'm going to say that I, you know I forgive and I don't blame my, my abuser. But again, it, it, it was a key factor into the future, into the story. And, uh, you know, I, I could remember this person saying, you know, come with me. And he would bring me up onto the top of his garage in this dark area. And at first, like in t t talking about it, I could remember, you know, the touching and the, I'm not going to get into graphics unless you want me to, but basically like doing things of a sexual abuse nature. For me, I was a kid. I didn't know. And then I used to get scared when I had to go there, but you know, I had to go there, I had to go there. And then I would be like, I don't want you to do this, please. I don't want to do this. Yeah. Well, if you say anything, I'm going to kill your mother. Okay. Kill your mother. So for many, many times going to this person's house, I would walk into his backyard to the left. I could see my father 
my father because the backyards were attached back in those days. You could see everybody and I could see my father and, and the fear in me like frozen, frozen. I just wanted to scream, Pop, please get me out of here. But I couldn't because what was in here, he's going to kill my mom if I say something. So I shut my mouth. And, uh, you know, it, it, it went along. I'd have to say for four or five years and fear, fear all the time, fear. And I'll never forget one time we went to this person's house with his parents and my dad, and we went to watch a Italy soccer game in, the, in their basement. And he goes, come here, come here. So he brings me in the back, and he gives me this, this glass of white, uh, whatever. it was. I could remember just clearly. It was a glass of white wine. And he says, drink it. So I drank it, and fuck, man. It, like, I could remember that. Like, just right now, 45 years old, I could remember that feeling of, <sighs> I'm not afraid. I don't feel scared right now. To be next to this guy because it was it was paralyzing to be next to this person but at the same time being addicted to be beside him if anybody could understand that and you know what like after that like we drank another glass another glass and we got a little tipsy whatever and i, I think it was eight nine ten years old and you know everybody was watching the soccer game and when he asked me to go into the garage man i was like i was in front of him i was running yeah let's go do what we gotta do like i was okay with it even though i knew it was wrong I was okay with it because I was feeling okay. And um, then many, many times after that, I, uh, yeah, man, I, uh, I went. Before I'd go, I'd go to my dad's candina because <laughs> we know that's where the gold is. <laughs> that's where the gold well, is. That's where the gold is. And, you know, I'd have my couple of glasses, you know, quick, 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 you know, and I, I already knew what was I, I was in store for. So I went. And, you know, sometimes he would even have me bring little, like, not little girls, girls my age there, but they would run away right real fast. I remember some of the parents even coming and me having to shut up. No, no, we're not doing nothing wrong. And, and yeah, and then, uh, then uh, it just, like, he just, he just went away type of thing. Like, he was older, so he went on with his life. Like I said, you know, I don't blame him. He was doing repeat behavior. So, for him... Maybe there was some type of guilt in him. Maybe there was. I don't know. I can't speak for someone else. But for me, it was freeing and at the same time sad. Sad that, you know, why did you, why did you like, uh, abandon me all of a sudden? You just left, right? It was fucking weird. But, um, you know, and then at, in this area, still playing hockey, still playing soccer, giving it my all. But I was an angry, angry person after. I become very angry. My hockey career was going phenomenal, but man, anytime I got to drop the gloves, I'll drop them on the ice. I'll drop them before we get on the ice, after the ice. I didn't care. I just wanted to unleash. I wanted to unleash because anybody who showed me aggression was going to get it. And you know what, man? Sometimes I had to take my lumps, but a lot of times I gave them. And you know what? Not a lot of people know this about me, but a lot of the fights I had, at home, when I would go home at night, and I'd always said my prayers, because that was taught to me. And um, you know, I, I pray for that person that I didn't hurt them enough. I didn't hurt them a lot. I, I was, I was sad that I hurt another human being, but at the same time, I couldn't show my weakness, my vulnerability. Which I thought at those times, I thought you show your vulnerability, you show your weakness. You're, you're gonna get walked you're, all over. You're gonna get rocked. Yeah, you're gonna get walked all over. So. Um, that continued with me throughout my hockey career, my soccer career, man. Oh, my God. Anybody would touch one of my friends. Like, I saw someone in pain. I was coming at you. And that's just how it was for me. I could not see someone in pain. Someone hurting, I had to be in front of them, hurting for them, because I know the pain. And I didn't want anybody to feel that. And, you know, I took it to a degree of... Um, you know, like you were saying before, Al Capone, like I, I took that mentality at a very young age, right? Because innocence was was weakness. Love was weakness. And um, at the same time, I was nothing but a giver. I wanted to give, give, give. I gave always to the wrong people. Well, I gave to the ones who took advantage of it. And, um, yep. you, know, I, uh, you know, my hockey career was booming. I got drafted from the Toronto Red Wings. Great, great, great organization. Just all bread, pieces of bread, all of them. Um, yeah, I was I was pulled aside, Joe. You know, we have so much great things looking forward to your future. You should be going to the to the show. 
Uh, you should be there. You've got to keep working hard. You're a leader in the dressing room. You, the way you motivate everybody, the way you just don't take a loss, a loss. You, you take that loss with you. But when we win, you 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 celebrate the win and, and you tell everybody you got to do harder. You got to do better. You got to do better. That was taught to me by my dad. Was it taught to me in a positive way all the time? No. Can I blame my dad? No, I can't because that's what was taught to him. He was doing the best he could with what he had in front of him. Of course. And I love him for it. And I, I don't want to say hate him for it, but I was angry for it too. Because at a very young age, I just wanted my dad to be my friend. And, uh, you know, he just didn't he didn't, he just didn't have it in him. My dad loves me to the moon and back. I know for sure he does. That's the, his way. His way of showing his friendship to me was, you know, being at my hockey games when he was working nights at Ford and sneaking out and sneaking back in just to see his son playing and then going back to work, driving an hour from Oakville to come to Toronto just to watch his son score three, four, five goals. And then no matter what, always being told, you could have done better. <laughs> you could have done better. And you know what? That's a good way to teach people, but saying you could have done better is a negative. You did great. You did great, but you got better in you. That, to me, is a little bit different. But again, I'm doing the work to learn how to, how to use my words properly. Yeah. So. So, so Joe, I mean, there's already so much to, again, unpack with that, just the beginning part. I mean, you're, you're 12 years old at this point. And I guess that my question then, Joe, is, is that, you know, as you started to get up, I mean, you know, just a few years later, we met, you know, we were in high school together. And, and I think you, if I'm not mistaken, bro, you went to, did you go to McGuigan first? No, after, after I got kicked out of Sham. <laughs> After I got so kicked you out, to, you no, I, was to, after. I was asked to leave politely. <laughs> you were asked to leave politely from Shamanon. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I mean, even while you went through high school, bro, I mean, I guess that the question is, is so, so at what age did sort of, um, you know, mind altering drugs come in? What, like, like wh when did this happen and sort of how, what was the start of that? Okay, well, you know, the, the wine was mind-altering, so it started from there, and then getting into the neighborhood, right, and, um, you know, starting to give up on hockey, starting to say, fuck this, I'm done, I'm done, The bet I do my best, I do my best, I do my best, and, you know, all I'm asking for is some friendship here, Dad, or, you know, I just, you know, if, listen, listen, Italians, like, I got to say this, like, European mentalities, it, it was what it was. You know, thank God people like myself and yourself are learning from that and doing a different curve. They loved us. But um, at, a, at about 13, 14 years old is when uh, weed and cocaine started to come into play. Um, you know, the feeling of, 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 of uplifting and, and thinking that, oh, look at me, look at me, cool kid, if you want to call it that. Um, well, you were the cool kid. Let's yeah, face it. I know. Uh, cool <laughs> kid, the... Uh, but the, the wrong wrong way. Yeah, it's cool. The it, real it, people it, it, who knew me, knew the person I was, knew the good person I was. The ones that I was a little bit vulnerable around. Like yourself, you were one of those yes. guys. I was I was able to be vulnerable around because the connection, even at a young age, that connection, even though I didn't know nothing about, like too much about the energy exchanges on goodness of people's insides, yeah, yourself included. It was There was a connection there right away. Yeah, yeah. Me and you, we had a connection right away. It was, oh, it was I remember. Instant. It was like... I can remember with your curls, with those curls you used to have, like, <laughs> oh, my God. And you were just a – oh, you still are, but you were like a beast. And, uh, yeah, bro, oh, yeah. And, yeah, we connected great. We always had a great respect and, and, and friendship to, with each other, and it lasted all the way till like, yeah, like you said, 30 years. Um, at about, yeah, 14, 15, I went I, – from Chaminade, I went to McGuigan, and, uh Yeah. That's when the decision was made. You know what? There's money to be made easy over here. Well, I know enough people to make a lot of money out here. And my plans for the money were to do good things with it. But, you know, parties came into play. Uh, clubs came into play. Getting into after hours came into play. Hanging around with the, the, the right people at those times. I called them the right people. And, you know, connections were made like that. And, uh, you know, money was easy. It was easy at a very young age to be bringing in. I'm not going to talk about money because I don't want to glorify money. Uh, but, you know, a lot for a 15, 16, 17-year-old kid, a lot of money to be bringing in, right? And, 
you know, and my money, easy come, easy go. It was given to everybody around me. I need, I needed to be loved. I needed to be liked. I could not show, oh my God, imagine they know that I was raped. Imagine they know that this, imagine they know that, um, that I, I cry at night. Imagine they know these things. Imagine they know I pray for, for peace. Imagine they know these things. They're going to laugh at me, these people. Yeah. No, no. You're going to see a guy that you're going to you're gonna see me walking down the street, and you're going to say, fuck, here comes Joe. Everybody smile. Everybody smile. Make sure you do what he says. And, yeah, I could remember a lot of things like that. And I could remember – I could remember just like I was sharing before – no, I could not see anybody suffer. I like to tell you how many fights I've actually started. I don't know, not many. I, I was more of the guy jumping in and making sure nobody got hurt and just taking the punches for anybody because I just didn't want to see anybody hurt. And uh, that took me a long ways. And it actually, it actually helped me in, in a way for the organized life that I started to live because people saw that this guy was willing to stand in front of anything. He just didn't care. He was willing to stand in front of anything for us. So how do we utilize this guy? How do we utilize this guy? How do we utilize him? Send him out there. And, you know, I started doing my the life. I started living the life. I started, um, you know, started booking. I started selling dope. I started uh, collecting money. Um, and, you know, no matter what, no matter who I went to see or what I, I prayed all the time, please, God, make sure that they're not in pain. Please, God... Help these people not buy the drugs. P please, God, help these people stop gambling. Because if they stopped, I didn't have to do that job anymore. And, um, oh, you know, yeah. it, was, it, was, it wasn't it was about the outer world in the end. In the end, it was not about the outer world. It was about me inside and opening this up. And when I opened this up, and I finally said, no, I don't care anymore. People are going to know who I am. Uh, you know, there's there's some people to this day that, you know, are seeing me trying my best. Do I fall? <laughs> Do I fall? I fall like the rest of them. I fall like the best of them. I love Denzel Washington. I don't know if you've ever seen him speak. I love what he says so much. You're going to fail. You're going to fail in life. The most successful people failed one more time. They failed one more time. They kept trying and trying and trying. When you fail, when you fall, Denzel Washington always says it, fall forward. Don't fall backwards. You're going to fall. Fall forward. And when he was saying that, I was like, oh, my God, when I was teaching my little girls how to skate, I would always say, Papa, when you fall, fall forward. Fall forward, Papa, because you can see where you're going when you fall. When you fall backwards, you can't see where you're going. You can't see what's behind you. There was, there was, and I'm going to say it, years that I'd fall and I'd fall backwards. Well, man, there was some times I would be in bed for maybe a week. I would get up at 8 o'clock at night just to go get a fix and go back home and sleep and wake up and force myself back to sleep because I just did not want to see the world. It was just draining out of me. It was like a higher energy was trying to stop me from getting up and keep living that life. And I finally saw that, that that's exactly what it was. It was that inner voice that was saying, you're better than this. And not just me. Everybody in the world gets this because we're all born with one thing, this, light. We're all born with light, love. I was coming home from Italy yesterday on the plane. I was watching a movie. And I'm going to say, it. yeah, that's right. I was watching Frozen 2. Cause I love that movie. Okay. Yeah. 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 I'm the biggest listen, you'll ever meet in your life. Eh? Joe, I, I have a three-year-old and I'll tell you, man, watching some of these animated movies, holy shit. I think they were meant for us, bro. And you know what? The messages I see in it. And there was a part where the, the, the character Olaf was, he's losing his power because the princess lost her power. And I think princess on, I'm not going to get into too much detail, but he <laughs> looks at her and he says, you know, I can't follow you. And uh, I can't follow you right now. I'm, I'm and he's melting away. And he's saying, you know, one thing that I'm realizing right now that's permanent, that's permanent, is love. We're all born with love, man. You could tell people I hate you. Hate is not a, it's not an emotion. There's a deeper issue when somebody says I hate you. If you tell me you hate me, that's just you're telling me I love you. I'm just angry with you right now. Or and you're second. Yeah, there's something inside me that's not right, and that's and I'm sort of, you know. 
uh, uh, pushing that anger out onto you? A hundred percent. How do I know this? Because I did it for many years. I did it for many years. And, uh, you know, today, yeah, am I going to tell you to sit here and say I never get angry or uh, I never feel like, oh, my God, man, like, in one second, I can just go back to the old life, make money, do great things. Oh, wait a second. But it comes along with a lot of – comes along – it comes with some heavy, heavy stuff to make a decision to go back to easy, and I won't do it. I won't do it. I just – it's not worth it for me. I, I choose to live in love today. Like there's some people that, that send, send vibes at my way, and it is what it is. What do I do? What do I choose to do today when I journal? I journal success for them. I journal – light for them i journal that they find their light and they listen to that voice inside because you know to hate or to have anger man it's heavy it's heavy it's draining and it just it sucks the life out of you love is love got me no sleep like i'm just jumping sometimes like i'm jumping out of bed i'm like what am i doing next who am i talking to where am i going god please god and when i say god i don't mean it in the roman catholic sense i mean it in a higher power and a higher light god buddha the Dalai Lama, anybody that sends love, Jesus, anybody who sends love has a story of love. That's what I love. I love that. And that's all I'm trying to do. I'm just, I'm trying, I'm trying to do, I'm trying to do my best that I could do every day because not that I have the whole world watching me, but I have three beautiful angels watching me every day. And, and, you know, sometimes when, they see me crying, you know, it's hard not to cry sometimes. It's just hard not to cry. Um, and, uh, you know, they're they're a huge inspiration for me, my three daughters. Huge inspiration. They're basically not the one reason, because I'm the number one reason, I have to say, because without Joe, there's nothing. Of course. But, but, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, going along. Uh, so yeah. How many, years, how many years did addiction last, Joe? Like, I mean, we're talking like decades. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Addiction is still alive and well right in here, bro. It doesn't stop. I'll tell you right now, before the show started, I was feeling so great. You know what that little part of my brain said? Oh, when the show's done, eh? When the show's done, you could go. You could go. No one's going to know. No one's going to know you go have a drink. This thing never shuts off. I know. But neither does this thing. This thing never shuts off either anymore. Of course. And when I need help, I'll ask for it. That's vulnerability. That's strength. For me, vulnerability equals strength. Well, uh, of course, and I mean that's where that's where the, the the magic happens, you know. I mean, is when 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 and and sort of what I do, Joe, because it's funny, you know. I had a I had a really tough week, Joe, and uh, I was super excited to be here with you today because I knew that you were going to bring your light, and and I've I've known your light for thirty years, but I had a really shitty day, and you know, Joe, I've got a I've got and this is this is the perfect time to say this, but I've got a company. And it's called Decorous Life. And Decorous is the Latin word for beautiful. And my last name is Love Bellissimo. That. Okay. So I, I just, I just, I decided that I was going to, with the pandemic, open up this coaching business. And I have to be honest with you, Joe, this is fucking hard, man. Being a coach and trying to constantly seek out clients, to constantly, you know, reinvent yourself. Uh, it, it, it really is such a difficult thing. And so, what I can say is, is that, and, and, and Kimmy smiles just said in the chat, Joe, you always continue to inspire. I me, was so. just reading that and I was waiting. I was, I love you, Kim. Thank you. Thank you very much. You too inspire me always. So, you know, what I, what I can say, Joe, is, is that it's very, it, it, you know, I'm sort of feeling a bit defeated today, but then I see your light and then I see what you've been through. And then I see your, you know, I listen to your story. I feel your energy as I create this space for you to be vulnerable and for you to be open. So I want to take this somewhere, Joe, because we've, we, we, we have a picture. But there's so much of that picture that we need to understand. And one of them is this. If you've known anybody who went through the 12 steps of Alcoholics Anonymous, um, one of the things that that. I was, was sort of taught to me. And then I experienced through friends was, is that by the end of it, they find God or they find faith. And so the question for me remains is in your experience, you know, is there some truth to saying that an addiction is actually nothing more than a spiritual disconnect? 
you know, can we can we talk a little bit about that? Definitely, one hundred percent. I totally agree with you. Um, you know, no faith. What do we have? We're left with nothing. Nothingness. Nothing. Th nothingness is just an empty void. Empty void that you just need to keep filling and filling and filling. Spiritual faith growth in that fills that void. And what's it? What does it fill it with? It fills it with love, strength, light. It fills it with the decisions to do the next right thing. Uh, uh, to listen to that 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 voice that says, "Keep moving forward, keep moving forward." Don't worry if you fell. Everybody falls. Everybody falls. Doesn't mean that the well's got to get emptied. Doesn't mean that the spiritual growth ends. I've 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 fallen in my in my in my recovery. Does that make me a, a failure? In the beginning stages, yeah, it made me feel like I'm no good to walk up and get another white key tag or to tell someone, yeah, man, fuck yesterday, I fucked up again. It was hard, and you know what I did? I ran. I ran, I ran, and I don't run anymore. Because running away makes us run away from the light. And the darkness for myself is a very scary place. Yeah. Um, and so, and so, but, but Joe, you know, like, I, I think it's interesting because, you know, you, you, we, we, we've, we certainly have connected, you know, uh, even even though we haven't seen each other and so on, we've connected. We connected uh, with that friend of ours, whatever her name was, back in the day. And I yeah. was doing my metaphysical study, you know. But the, but the truth is, Joe, is is that I, I find it interesting. And you know, you having been through the the process, you know, of 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 you know now going to speak to people with with addictions, you know, and and again sharing your light with them. What happened? Like, take me to the process, bro. When did that light finally come? Because I know that the light came when you decided that the light was was worth it. The light was more powerful. The light meant stop running away from my problems. Let me deal with them and let me let me shine this positivity instead of the dark. But take us through that if you could. No problem. Um, 2016 was uh, basically the end of my marriage. Uh, I was I was relapsing on a daily like. It was almost I could I could remember vividly. It was like I was watching myself trying to stop myself. It was an out of body experience watching this guy sit there, drink and drink and drink from the morning until night because I knew it was done, and it was scary to think that because I've known this woman for many many years. I still to this day have a lot of love for her, um, and I ended up at uh, what I like to call the gates of hell. What I thought was the gates of hell. What I thought was the gates of hell, mm -hmm. which was a beautiful, beautiful treatment center I went to, Trafalgar House in Aaron. I love you guys all. You guys, you guys showed me the strength I had. You didn't give me the strength. You showed me the strength I had. And getting there, I was so scared, crying my head off. Mom, I can't do this. Please, please. Why? Because I knew it was done. I knew deep down inside I wanted this, but I was so scared because that's when the the roller coaster. Uh, the roller coaster of hell was over but hell for me was a safe place it was a comfort zone of course it's what i knew and getting to that door i remember it was i think the seventh or eighth day crying my head off every day i did not raise my head i did not talk to people i hardly ate i just kept my head down during our groups i was crying and crying and crying and i sat there and I'll never forget this guy, Ray. He's a counselor at Trafalgar House. This guy is just a beautiful human being. He, he, before he was leaving on a Friday, he goes, Joe, come with me for a second. And he brought me over the steps, and he sat me down. I was crying. He goes, and he puts his hand on my back, and he goes, listen, man. He goes, you're an amazing human being. Your heart has a lot of pain. But what I need from you here today, when I get back on Monday, I need to see some movement because you don't want to waste your time here crying every day because that's going backwards i need you to do one little thing anything that you could do to write just talk just even say some words i didn't talk to nobody nothing zero zero and um he left and it was the shift it was the shift like i got this guy who believes in me 
Everybody out there right now is hating on Joe. I got this guy who said, you're good and you're going to do this, but you got to, you have to do it. I could tell you, you're going to do it, but if you don't do it, you're not going to do it. And that day I got to the gym, I started working out a little bit. Next day I went, I just worked out in the morning. I started talking more to my therapist. I started doing the homework she was giving me. I asked her for a book, The Gift of Change, beautiful by Marion Williamson. Great, great author, great, great book. Um, I started reading that book and I started journaling every night and I started becoming part of the meditations. By Monday when that guy came and he saw me and he's after the class, he was like, wow, you shared. You're opening up. Okay, you cried a little bit, but you're not crying as much. But, and every day, and every day, and every day, I just kept doing the little things. Because my whole life was the big things. How big can I get? How much money can I make? How much money? What can I have? What can I have? What do I got to show people I have? It was the little, small, little things that I was doing. And by by a week later, I was, I was looking to do meetings inside the treatment center. That's where hope was born. Um, I was just, I, I went to meetings outside because, you know, two or three times a week we were going to outdoor meetings. Troy, I love you. I'll never forget you, brother, uh, from the Trafalgar House as well. Still one of my dear friends. And I had visions, and I said, you know what, Joe? You're going to be Joe from now on. You're going to be Joe, the kid. And my therapist took me through a lot, took me through – a lot of therapy took me to a hypnosis, brought me back to that little boy. I can remember vividly being in the park and watching the house where I was sexually abused at and, and seeing me myself next to this little boy saying, it's not your fault. It's not your fault. You got to, you got to come out of that closet and you got to, you got to forgive yourself, you know? And, and you know what? It, it's to this day, I still work on that a lot. I still do because I'm a human being and you know, I'm not perfect and I make mistakes sometimes. But one thing about me is I'll apologize for my mistakes. And if I don't see the mistake and somebody calls me out on it, I'll definitely dissect it. And I'll definitely apologize on it. But treatment changed my life. Counseling changed my life because it allowed me to become vulnerable. And being vulnerable made me stronger, spiritually stronger. That's amazing. What an amazing story, Joe. Thanks for sharing, bro. Because Oh, please. No, because you know that that means a lot to me because you know, you don't have to you don't have to tell me, you know, think about the way the world we're in, you know. Uh, what's happening in the world today? We're in the midst of a pandemic. We've got we're in the, you know, starting the fourth wave or in the midst of a fourth wave. Uh, uh, you know, Taliban's taken over Afghanistan. <laughs> Syria still a mess. Uh, you know, like all these different conflicts and wars and 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 there's a huge listen, there's a huge divide here in our country. We had genocide here in our own country with the with the with the with the with the uh, indigenous uh, uh, children. And, and you know, like there's so much that we could say that in the collective, there's a lot of bad energy. But Joe. What I have to believe in, what I what I have faith is is that, and that's why I love the word hope. And we're going to talk a little bit about this a little later, but mm -hmm. but that there's hope that as long as we can get up at every day, as long as we're given the gift of getting up every day, that all we need to do is subscribe to the philosophy that we are going to be better than we were yesterday. And even if we fall, but we're going to fall forward so that the next day I can learn from that and continue to move forward. And, and uh, your, your story, you know, uh, uh, Rob M613 just Thanks, writes, Rob. what a powerful and inspiring story. Joe, you are an inspira inspiring human being. Yeah, Joe, it, it really is the truth because I'll tell you something. I came onto this show feeling like shit. That's the truth. I came out. I was having a tough day. I phoned you last night at about yep. nine o'clock. Said, Joe, I'm sorry I can't do the sound check now. Let's do it tomorrow. You know, things are falling apart for me. Listen, Joe, I, I really, I, I may, I'm in the, I'm in the midst of, of going to, go and get a job, because I need to get it just so that I can have that stability. It's not what I want to do, bro. Uh, I really want to go, and and I'm, I'm like I said, I feel defeated, but. There is something about your energy. There is something very special about it, Joe. There really is something, you know, aside from the fact that when you're talking, you you kind of like, 
you know, as a crew in Muay Thai, you go into a room where you're teaching, you command respect. You have that energy, Joe. You right. command respect. And what that means is, is that when people are, people are in front of you, they listen because you've got a message to share. And one of that messages is this understanding of hope. Can you tell us a little bit about how this all came to be and all this great gear and, you know, hope be the cure, this foundation? Talk us a little bit through it. Well, it was, uh, you know, th that voice inside of me was there prior to getting into treatment in 2016. And, you know, for, for, for a little while, I was like, you know, make that change, make that change. Didn't have the strength to do it. Make that change. Help kids, help people, help the sexually abused, help the people suffering from you. But what the fuck did I know? I was an addict, an active addiction, living a lifestyle. Yeah. That's what I was doing. Uh, but there was that voice. I just shut him out because get out of here. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? Yeah, I'm nothing. Actually, we, we are all that? we are all superpower beings. Every one of us on this earth, because we're brought here to do one thing: love. <clears> How <throat> hope came about? Uh, 2009. Myself and my ex-wife, we 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 lost a daughter. Her name was we named her Hope. She was uh, born. How do you call it? stillborn? The day she was supposed to be born, she passed. And, you know, it was what it was. And, uh, you know, um, years later when I was in treatment, I was like, I need to do something for the world. These people helped me realize that my my strength lies within, not without. Material world is not strength. Strength comes from within, faith, spirituality, uh, loving. Um, and that word, just I, hope, it just came, hope. You know what? How do, I'm going to keep I'm going to keep that name alive. Hope, hope, and I saw everything, strength, hope, love, hope, faith, hope, 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 and it just strung out, and then how do I keep the light in there, and then the sun had to be the O, and and uh, the vision from back then was to tell my story, to tell people that no matter what you're chasing, I love what Bob Marty said, you know, if you're chasing not money, money's numbers, numbers never end, and if you're chasing money to be happy, you're never going to find happiness. You're never going to find it. Money is a number. It's a material. It doesn't last. I have a friend who had purchased a Ferrari, and, you know, he's well-to-do. God bless him. And he goes, Joe, and he's he's in recovery with me. And he goes, Joe, you know the best rush I had from that Ferrari? When I picked it up and I brought it home. Why? Because it's material. It doesn't last. He put it in the garage, and it was like, bro, sometimes I got to go start that thing. I don't even want to drive it. That's not real happiness. True happiness comes inside. And that's what hope, that's what I'm trying to bring with hope is, you know, you're, you know someone's doing wrong to you, talk to someone about it. Talk. Trauma is a huge, huge factor in mental health, mental illness, in addiction. Uh, the great Dr. Gabor Mate said it. If you read this book, oh my God, it's phenomenal. The Realm of Hungry Ghosts by Dr. Gabor Mate. You want to know what addicts go through and the pain and the spiritual bankruptcy of an addict? Read that book. Um, spiritual bankruptcy. I love it. What a great word. What and a great that's, word. That's what it is. We got nothing left. We have nothing left. We keep hitting bottoms, keep hitting bottoms. The problem is, is when we don't find that light, some of us don't make it back from that bottom. And, you know, I lost a lot of friends the past four or five years like this. And, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're inspiring for me. You know, uh, unfortunately, they didn't they didn't make it out of the disease. Um, it comes with part of having disease, addiction, cancer. Uh, I don't know any type of disease. It, some people just don't make it, and um, you know, with addiction, it's a very very low percentage. That's why we need to do the work. Clean time does not equal recovery. You can stay clean for 15, 20 years, and you could be a fucking bag of dirt. You could be an angry person. I don't want to inspire. I don't want to first. I don't want to be an angry person and show people this. This is what the life is when I get clean. No, man, no. Wow, hold on, and let's let's stop there for a second. That's powerful. So you're saying that just recovering is just the recovery process is is not enough. The clean time is not enough. The clean time is not enough. Putting the drug aside is the failed solution. We went to the drug because we look we're looking for a solution. And it always failed us because it's the failed solution. The solution is in the journey. The journey never ends. There's no destination. The destination comes when we're finished on planet Earth and our higher power brings us back home for our next mission. 
Uh, but our journey never ends. And, you know, once you put that drug and, 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 and whatever it is that you suffer from an addiction aside, that's when the work starts, the 12 steps. I mean, like, I love them. I live by them. I try to practice them every day in my life, you know, and the step one, admitted I was powerless over my addiction and my life was unmanageable. That's just the truth. The journey is the most beautiful part of, of recovery. The journey, the, the, the helping another human being, whether it's a recovering addict, whether it's the old lady that needs help crossing the street, it doesn't matter. It matters just be the best you can be because everybody, we all have it in us. Some of us, our light is covered by darkness, but the light doesn't die. It's always there. Love, love is, doesn't die. Love is permanent. It's love is there when, even when we pass away, love goes with us. Darkness doesn't come with us. Love is always going to be with us. There from the day we're born, and it's from the day we, we, we go. I mean, like, I always say this when I share, too. I work so hard to have that childlike like innocence in my life. That, that not being afraid to say the truth, how you feel. And, you know, children are a great example of how the world should be. Free. Love. You know, I make friends with everybody. I don't. I want to be friends with the world. Why? Because the world comes from one place. We're all sent here from love. Regardless of what you believe in on God or, you know, the, the Buddha. Or, Allah, Yehovah, yeah. It doesn't matter. It, you it doesn't know, matter. Insof, it doesn't matter. Yeah, it don't matter. It's a light. At the end of the day, it's a light. It's love. Yeah. Society takes a, uh, teaches us how not to expose our love, and that's but wrong. The, Joe, I got to tell you, th th to me, that's remarkable. Like, what a powerful statement that being clean is not enough. Nope. <laughs> Holy shit. I would have never have said that in my entire life. I would have said, wow, this guy's clean for 20 years. Yeah, but if you're clean for 20 years and you're a prick. <laughs> what do you teach in the, the world? What do you, you know, what's the good of being clean if you're not being nice to, if you're not taking that cleanliness and then doing something about it? Yep. Wow. Yeah. Society teaches us, I love us that. how not to expose our life. I love that. Putination. Putination. I love that. Yeah, man. I love that. It's so true. But what I love most about society, not society, what I love most about, did I bring his book up? Uh, I think I did, The Power of Now, Eckhart Tolle, The Power of Now. I went to see him speak, and what a beautiful man. And uh, he says, he says, you know, 80% of the world, maybe more, are programmed, programmed to not have faith, to listen to what they tell you to listen to. That's why I'm not so much into that religion aspect enough respect to all the religions including including where i was baptized it's just religion for me is a man-made thing and spirituality is given from from the heavens above well if i could find it joe i would love to find it i'd have to i'd have to look for it but what it was a wonderful no 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 the, the book is the, the book is great the eckhart tolle book is great i mean i, I certainly have uh uh, uh you know and I, I think i follow eckhart tolle on on social media you know uh but no, but the idea of 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 re the difference between uh, religion and spirituality, and how how there's a huge difference, and I want to see if I can find it because, uh, you know, and I hope that this resonates with you because. Again, Joe, I love that. I love the fact that you've said that this is more, there's more to just recovery than clean time. There's about putting that clean in action. There's about taking that energy of you cleaning, being clean and, and, and putting it into action. That's a, that's really great, bro. I have to tell you, I'm, 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 I really feel good. Here it is, Joe. So religion by definition is a personal set or institutionalized system of religious oh. attitudes, beliefs, and practices, the service and worship of God or the supernatural. Spirituality, spirituality is the aspect of humanity that refers to the way individuals seek and express meaning and purpose and the way they experience their connectedness to the moment, to self, to others, to nature, and to the significant or sacred. See, I'm going to tell you one thing right now. I love this quote. I, I post it sometimes, and it says, religious people are afraid of hell. 
spiritual people have been to hell and back. Yeah. There's no a big doubt. difference there, bro. No doubt, man. That's because that's the lived experience, you know. Yep. You know, it's it's interesting, Joe, because there was always, you know, there's so much to to talk about here when we talk about spirituality. Because, you know, I spent five years, uh, you know, involved with an esoteric school uh, in Toronto, and you know, there was so much that I, I I really did take from it. You know, it didn't it didn't, you know, it, it had it served its purpose, um, but one of the things that really stuck out for me was is that. How do you get to God? And they said that there's two ways, as a mystic and as an occultist. A mystic is one who uh, decides that they're going to sort of take their way out of society. A priest, a monk, you know, somebody that decides that they're going to they're going to pull themselves away from society and and maybe maybe practice celibacy and and just focus on life. Uh, mm -hmm. as a as a mystic the second way is to become an occultist an occultist is is one who lives within the matrix but is not influenced by the matrix and i'll tell you why that's very powerful to me it's powerful to me because joe you you've said this time and time again in this interview about it's easy to go to the dark it really is easy and if you talk about choice theory, Francesco Bazzacchi, my choice theory mentor said, you know, even for people that are addicted, they have their quality world picture. And in that quality world picture, taking drugs, being addicted helps them in, 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 in one of the five, uh, uh, um, in one of the five basic needs that we have as humans. And for one of them, it could be love and belonging that we take these drugs so that we can fit in mm -hmm. because there's so much anger. So taking the drugs takes away the anger so that I can fit in and be liked again. Perfect. I love that. I love right? it. And so I, I just, I just, I don't know. I mean, I'm amazed. I mean, certainly people are writing and have written in the chat about what an inspiring story. But so, Joe, what does, you know, because I want to not switch gears with the hope mm -hmm. thing for a second. But mm -hmm. so what does hope do? What's the what's the sort of the the, the purpose, if you will, of, of hope? Can people can people donate? What's what does it do? You know, you could uh, reach out, DM me. You could call me at six, four, seven, two, nine, nine, zero, nine, eight, one. Order hats, T-shirts. Reach out to me if you need help with anything. Um, I want hope to become such a thing that people people attract to the light. People attract to the message of love, 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 uh, forgiveness, um, um, speaking about what's going on, not being afraid. Like everybody loves to talk about how happy they are. I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm doing great. You know, it's great to talk about how happy we are because those are our successes. But we need to talk about our, our our failures as well. We need to talk about our pains. Talk about our pains. That's where our strength comes from. That's where my strength comes from, from talking about my pain, talking about how my day went yesterday. You know, I, hope is, I'm going to say it. I want to I wanna do what many and many other people that are, are, are doing in the spiritual world. We want a world full of love. No war, love. No hate, love. So the money that gets created for this, bro, selling the T-shirts or doing whatever it is that you do, what's it? What's it like? What are we doing with it? What's with the? What are we doing with this money? How are we, like? What's it doing? Because I know that you're going. I know that you personally are going to to to. Uh, uh, I don't know. I don't know what the the the, the drug related version of AA is. What's it called? I have Narcotics Anonymous NA. Beautiful program. Okay. Beautiful program. Um, what was I going with this? Uh, I want to know because I want to know because I want people to understand what hope is all about. Because listen, man, I'm wearing the shirt. I'm a, I'm I'm pro hope. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, I want to raise money, get programs together for the people who can afford it. Kids that you know are coming from mentally abusive uh, households, sexually abused, that can't talk about it. I want them to feel safe. I want to have programs where I could bring kids, even adults, in in circles where we could each talk about what we want. Uh, I want to have um, you know some money that's that's being raised 
Uh, I'm putting together before be, before the cold time comes a day where we go feed the homeless, uh, get them some get them some uh, some uh, some co some covers, some pillows, you know, so your your, your daily essentials. Your, uh, what do you call it? Um, toothbrushes, toothpaste, soap, uh, things they need. Um, uh, just uh, whatever the world needs help with, hope is going to bring money there. Uh, but basically, yeah, I want to. You know, free counseling. Well, free counseling is myself, but not everybody does free counseling. People got to make a living. Like I make a living off doing one-on-one -on -one counseling as well, but there's people who can't afford it. I'll never shut the door off people. Never. You call me and say, listen, I'm broke, but I need help. The government takes too long to get me into a program. Call me, man. Call me at three in the morning. I don't give a crap when you call me. You need help and you're afraid that that next whatever is not going to be the last. Call me. Call me. I got you. I don't care where you are. I got you. I got your back. You heard it here, my friends. You heard it live on the Coffee and Biscotti show. You know, this is this is and I wanna I wanna say, you know, I kinda I kinda play with that because I, I love I love doing my my shtick with the coffee. But the truth is, Joe, is that I'll tell you, I'll tell you what. We many people don't know this, but this is the first time that you've come in public. Yeah. And and uh, and and have done this show uh, for the first time sharing some pretty powerful private things about your life and of course we got to give a shout out to 416 rap yeah, our yeah. Boy, Ralph Pelleggi in the house i saw it, my brother oh <laughs> shit <laughs> so you know what now you know what man um it's so easy for me to share everything that i've been through because i'm not afraid anymore yeah that's I, I don't it's not that i never get afraid but i'm not afraid anymore i'm not afraid of judgment i'm not afraid of anything because I have one thing in my life today. I have a higher power that's got my back anytime I need that, per that, that higher power. Manifestation is something I practice daily. I ask the universe for what I want and I let it go and I do the next right thing the best way I can. What sort of, you know, t talk us into sort of a day of, of the life and times of Joe, you know, like what sort of practices are you involved in, Joe, when you talk about spirituality? Are you involved in the meditation practice daily? You know, sort of share with us a little bit about what you're doing. Well, before my he my feet even hit the hit the floor in the morning, uh, TV goes on, guided meditation is on. 10 minute, 20 minute, five minute. I don't start my day without a meditation. That's one thing I don't miss. Uh, and I don't miss my prayer. I don't miss my prayer thanking my higher power for giving me another day, for giving me another day, regardless if I made a mistake or not. It was a lesson. A mistake is nothing but a lesson. That's all it is. Um, I get up. Uh, I, I, I get to yoga about two, three times a week. So I get to my hot yoga, which I love hot yoga. Um, and then I, I do some training with uh, with uh, a couple other people. I got to give a big shout out to O2 Fuel Vaughn. They are amazing, amazing, amazing group of people. Uh, 45 minute workouts. You want your ass whooped? Go to O2 Fuel. You'll love it. Um, then I get on the phone. I get on the phone and I start calling people. And I, you know, I, I got some people are, are are volunteering right now with it and um, just trying to get together. To, to what's the next step? Where are we going next? I loved how we came up with uh, you know feeding the homeless day and and handing out uh, um, covers and and jackets and. And, you know, and that's in the process right now. You know, we're getting phone calls done. You know, please deliver right to my front door. I'll come and pick it up. I don't care. And you you deliver, you get, I'm going to give you a free T-shirt. I don't even want money for it. I need, what my vision is, is to help people who are having a hard time helping themselves right now. Yeah. A good reason to donate, a good reason to, to you know, support the, the cause, you know, because, you know, Joe, that's really important. I mean, you know, it is at some point, you know, I, I would like to know, uh, you know, how much hope has done because, uh, you know, we could probably do a 90 minute show uh, just on, on, on what hope is doing because we need it. And God knows that, you know, listen, you know, I was talking to Ricky Atkinson, my boxing coach, of course, who's a, 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 a legend, a boxer, a legend in the crime world. And, you know, he was telling, you know, cause he lives downtown Toronto and he's telling me about tent city and how the pandemic mm. has kicked out so many people from their homes and they're living in tents at a park. And I, I just, I just, I know that what you're doing, Joe, is, is so important because more than ever, more than ever do people need 
what 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 you know the help and, and need support and and I'm really grateful to to you for for seeing your light because that's my superpower Joe that's my superpower my mm -hmm. superpower is I see your light even when you don't see it yourself and so I see your light Joe and I love what you're doing with it and and I can't wait to see what's done I mean I again with the help of Francesco we set up an outreach program we even did it at Atlanta uh, we did it uh, we did it for the esoteric school I studied with in Toronto where we did an outreach program and we made lunches uh, for uh, the homeless and we did a soft street patrol Amazing. but 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 there is there is lots to be said you know I was telling my friend Daryl I was telling my friend Daryl the other day that uh, I have this idea for an app, Joe. So we're going to be talking, my friend, because I, I got an it. idea. I, I got an idea for an app uh, about about helping about helping those less fortunate. So, so Joe, what's what's you know what's happening next? Like, what's happening in the life and times with Joe now? You know, you just got back from Italy, like I don't know, twelve hours ago, <laughs> something like that, 12, 15 hours ago. What? Next, next, next is. I'm in the process of writing a book. Uh, um, I'm in the process of actually discussion with, uh, I don't know if it'll happen this year, but uh, first annual golf tournament for Hope. I'm reaching out to, yeah, nice. you right, all the companies with lots of money uh, <laughs> for nice. some donations to help. And you know what, man? I, I just, <laughs> my dream is to have my treatment center one day and to just help people. And you know what? Like, I, I truly wish that it comes to the point where, there's, there's people out there that, you know, have these big companies that have been through this road that say, you know what, I want to help this, this, this cause. And I can get people in there that don't have money, like these government funded programs. A lot of people don't even get help from the government, but they want help. And you're saying it, the pandemic, you know, how many people are losing too many, too many, too many overdoses, uh, uh, um, suicides. It's, it's, it's not right. It's not right. These people want help. A lot of people want help and they just don't have the means for it. And I was lucky. I was I was lucky. I have a family who supported me, continues to support me, even though I could be such a prick sometimes. But uh, yeah. you know, it comes with being Joe. I mean, like I'm like I said before, I'm not perfect. But uh, yeah, I want to get a golf tournament together. I'd like to have a gala night maybe next year. Um, you know, get that money, get people fed, get people get people sleeping in the right places, get people. Uh, books, get people uh, journaling. Uh, you know, I got, I got, I got, I got uh, daily uh, gratitude affirmations being being put together right now. A uh, little small booklets that you could keep with yourself. And you know what? Like, yeah, right now I'm selling them because I'm trying to raise money. But I'd love to find companies that want to donate money so I could give these out for free. So I could give them out for free. And you know what, man? There's there are companies out there that do these type of things that help people, which I'm grateful. And I and I'm gonna find one. And I'm gonna find one. And I'm gonna work with them and. And yeah, man, we're going to change the world from my aspect, just like a lot of other people are changing the world with their foundations and their charities. It just, it takes one person at a time and um, the motion, it just, it goes in motion and it goes in motion. And you know what? A community grows and a community grows. And all of a sudden from a community, you have a city, from a city, you have a country, from a country, you have a world all together united with love. Oh my gosh. I'm getting goosebumps. Yeah, I'm getting goosebumps, man. This is it, folks. I'm, I'm telling you, this is what it's about. It's time to spread the love because the yeah. world's in a toilet. And so <laughs> stop pretending that it's not. And, and let's focus on sharing the love and sharing the light. I don't know why. I don't know why, you know, Joe, there was something... There was something that was said to me uh, about humanity in its in its in its ability and its behavior towards people. You know, they they talked about Jesus Christ in 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 this esoteric school, and they said, "Don't you think it's ironic that everybody who was a master on a planet doesn't have to be Jesus? It could be mm -hmm. uh, it could have been Gandhi, it could have been anybody. But here's what happened: at You're first, right. they fell in love with the person. Then they got jealous about the person. <laughs> then they hated the person." Then they crucified, and then they loved again. I want you to think about human how humans behave. Because the love never went away. The yeah, but we, we, you know, as humans, we we really evolve very slowly, you know, and and you know, I just think that it's time that there's a, a bit of a spiritual awakening. I know, and I'll give you an example, Joe. Uh, it's an example I've used when teaching empower thyself and. And one of the introduction to metaphysical classes that I used to teach. But it, it talked about 
yoga. You know, you mentioned that you do I yoga. Love I love it. My friend, if you did yoga in the 1980s, people would look at you and go, Joe, are you from another planet? Like, oh, what lunch. are you doing? Like, what kind of funny licking cigarettes are you really smoking for real? <laughs> <laughs> the, the interesting part about it is that I want you to fast forward 40 years, 30 years. You can find a yoga studio beside every Tim Hortons. And why? Why is that? Do you think that that's a coincidence? The answer is no. It's because there's a level of consciousness shift happening and that us as humans, we are starting to wake up. And yoga is something that's important for that. You know, and that's why there's a, a yoga studio on every corner. It's not because it's a fad and sort of like it's cool to wear little lemon pants. And, <laughs> you know, it, it has, you know, it has nothing to do with that. It has to do with the fact that that humans are waking up, but there's such a, 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 a fight. You said it best today, Joe. You said it best when you were talking about how society. What was the quote, Josh? Man, I forgot the quote. Society teaches us how not to expose our love. It's exactly the truth. That's why we need Joe Capone. That's why the world needs Joe Capone. Because there are, there are people who are going to really benefit from picking up the phone and, and, and dialing. So, Joe, you know, it kind of leads us into the, to the part of the show where I wanted to, you know, where I said, look, Joe, if you're having trouble, where do people call? Like, what are people doing? What, what can we do? I got three phone numbers here. Call. I got four, actually, because mine's going to be the last one, and it's going to be one that you could call 24 hours a day just like these ones. There's the Alcoholics Anonymous hotline, 1-800-839-1686. There's another one more number. time, Joe. 1 800 839 1686. Then there's a Narcotics Anonymous hotline. I love this phone number because the way it ends 1 800 600 HOPE. 1 800 600 4673. One there's more a, time. 1 800 600 4673. Then there's the Substance Abuse and Addiction Hotline. 1-844-299-0879. One more time, 1-844-299-0879. And you could call me 24 hours a day, 647-299-0981. DM me in my social media at Hope Be The Cure, all one word. I will always answer the phone. I'll never, ever not answer the phone. And if I don't answer, I'll call you right back. Amazing, Joe. Call. Absolutely amazing. Call. If you're suffering, call. Thank it's you, worth. Josh, for putting it in the chat. chat Thanks, Josh. Really appreciate it. And where's Ralph? Ralph, our buddy Ralph says, I yeah. didn't know. I thought I had no light. What are you kidding me, bro? Ralph, you your serious? smile used to light me up, man. Never oh, mind. Are you kidding me? Come on. Let's face it, Joe. We all knew who the comedian of our group was, and that was Ralph. Yep. yep. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you wanted to laugh, you go talk to Ralphie. That's it, man. Yeah. So, so Joe, I'm, I'm, I have to say, I'm, I'm, I'm super proud of, of, of your turnaround. I mean, I knew that this was a long time coming. We spoke, we spoke, I think, in, in, in our throughout our, our, our journey, uh, um, about, uh, you know, the turnaround that you were having and, and how you started this recovery, recovery process. But I have to say, man, I, I, I'm humbled by by the love that you share and, and by the love that you're shining because um, we all could use it. So um, hats off to you, my friend. You as well, Mel. You always show love. I love what you're doing here. I mean, like we, what you're doing here is helping change the world. Yeah. Frank I'd like Spadone to believe last, so. Yeah. Frank Spadone last week. Isn't he I amazing? Was inspired. I loved when he kept saying vibrate higher, vibrate higher. I love that. It stuck with me all week. Vibrate higher. It's such a powerful message. Vibrate higher. Yeah. Life's going to throw you curveballs. Life's going to try to knock you down a lot. But life's also going to love you a lot. Try to concentrate on the love. And I guess that that's the secret, eh? Oh, yeah. That's the secret. You know, what do you attribute the success to, Joe? What do you attribute your success to now and, and sort of coming this far, you know? Do you? I mean, I know that it's about an internal 
but was there was there a quantum moment in the recovery was there a quantum moment you know dr dyer calls it the quantum moment but was there something that really was it that guy was it that guy ray what was his name ray, ray? was it ray came to touch your back and that's how it happened you know what he was that moment in my life like moments in everybody's life that moment was supposed to happen those first eight nine days of crying was supposed to happen that moment where he pulled me aside was already written in the book long time before i was born that moment that moment where we sat in the side of the building was supposed to happen and he was the chosen he was chosen from the higher power to to, to give me that little push that i needed yeah a lot of society does not see it and maybe the inside it says it all oh, yeah you know what that person's right but we ignore it i ignored it a long time sometimes i still do um when messages are being sent to us we need to listen not just hear the message we need to listen to it internally we need to listen the, the, the more you connect yourself with a higher power a higher being god uh, whatever you want to call it the, the louder the voice gets the more you could understand what this power needs from you because this power put us here always to do the next right thing for the next person and including ourselves um everybody that comes in our path is, is is supposed to be on our path supposed to be in my path today was written a long 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 time ago today was written a long time ago and um i'm grateful for it i'm grateful to be able to come here and 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 tell Tell my story, tell the vision, tell the, tell what other people around the world are starting to do more and more of. Yeah. Like you're saying, you know, yoga studios on every corner. <laughs> For real, 30 years ago, you tell people yoga, they'll laugh at you. Yoga is one of the most beautiful, beautiful things you could do for yourself. Energy in the yoga studio is, it's, it's a transforming energy. Yeah. You leave a yoga studio, you feel, I feel like. Wow, like the energy, it, it takes me through the day. And you know what? Yeah, life life comes at me, man. Comes at, it came at you and, and, and you had your day yesterday. And, Holy and shit. Oh, you know, I prayed for, 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 for you. And um, I know you did, brother. And, you know, prayer and, 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 and sending love is such a beautiful, easy energy that it reaches people a lot faster than, than anger does. And it, it's 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 such a beautiful thing for me. And like I said, I'm not perfect. Sometimes I have my moments. But one thing I love about myself nowadays is my moments don't last. Yeah. My anger moments don't last, man. They don't. Because I remember being that person. And I remember why I was doing what I did. Because I didn't want to look in here. And now I look in here every single day. Because I'm a human being. I'm not a human. I'm not a superpower. We are not here to learn anything. We're here to remember who we are. I and, love the that. Under, and the understanding of, 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 you know, listening to your message, Joe, to me is very powerful because uh, me and the universe and God, we had a little chat yesterday because right. I said, hey, God, I could really appreciate if you could chill out a little bit. I've been through enough tough times. I'm ready, baby. I'm ready for some good shit, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but, but I'll, I'll tell you, I'll tell you, Joe, that um, that we, we you know we're we're here to remember who we are. But the idea of listening, and that's what we don't do. And my father used to tell me, God rest his soul. My father used to tell me, you had two ears and one mouth, so maybe you should do double the listening than you do talking. <laughs> right. So leave of up, course, leave it up to the Italians to give you their analogy. Right? <laughs> That's right. Give it to the leave it to the Italians to give you this kind of message. Hey, listen, boy, shut up. You have two years and one mouth. Do more listening. <laughs> oh God, That's no, but it's but it's true, Joe. He he really said it, and I know what he meant by it. And um, and I just uh, I just know that um, because in terms of awareness, Joe, there's only two kinds. There's the awareness of the energies of self and there's the awareness of the energies outside of self. Mm -hmm. So when you talk about listening to these messages, it's not about listening with your ears. It's about listening with your heart. And that's what we need to do more of. Everybody listens with their ears and then it has to go through the process of something called the mind. Mm -hmm. And we are not our thoughts, said Michael Singer. We are the awareness that we have thoughts. I love that. Michael Singer, The Untethered Soul. Put it on your reading list, Joe. I will. I got a bunch of books I'm, re I'm reading, but 
I love reading. I mean, like, I never would have thought. I read my first, first, first book when I was 40 years old. And I haven't put books down since. I love reading. That's why I'm writing my own book. I mean, like, listen, if it's just for me, it's just for me. I could care less. It's just know, for me. What a cathartic put, experience it would be. It's it's putting my, 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 my feelings to a piece of paper. Like, I do almost every night. I'm not perfect. I don't journal every night. But everybody out there, journal every night and make a small gratitude list. It helps so much much you'll have transformations obviously it's not a western society type of medicine it takes a little longer but it stays longer as well yeah mm -hmm. that's journaling, amazing journaling is changing my life it's changed my life i mean like i got three books just full of anger sadness love hate whatever it was but now the last couple books it's a lot of love a lot yeah. of love a lot of forgiveness forgiving myself um, giving myself goals for the next day, grateful lists, you know, uh, sometimes it's just uh, no matter what minimum three little things I'm grateful for, like a, I don't know, passing by a flower that caught my eye. That's, that's a beautiful thing, man. It is catching a flower that caught my eye. That's, that's gorgeous. Or talking to a friend mm, that I, that I've known for 30 years, but a big, but a boom, but a big, those are miracles, bro. Those are miracles. Those are two loves being intercepted. Like this, the energy in this room I'm sitting in right now, bro. It feels nice. I feel like I feel like I'm in high school again. <laughs> Me too, bro. I feel like that kid again, and I love it. I love it. Hey, listen, I may be 46, but like I was saying, man, I can still I can still box with the 20 year olds, baby. Hey, hey, brother, you know what? The universe <laughs> says it. The universe knows no age. No, 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 knows no number. No doubt. No, no doubt. Number. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, I do want to give a shout out to uh, to all those that we lost, uh, Joe, because even Ralph, he wrote it in a bit. He said, you know, um, you know, we've lost so many friends, Joe. Your help can guide us all. And uh, we all need help throughout our lives. And um, and, you know, I want to also give a shout out to Sandra Mio, who I don't know if you remember Sandra Mio, Joe, but uh, she was uh, she's uh, one of just an absolute incredible human being i love this woman dearly and uh, she's back from the um uh, she's back from the madonna days that's how, how long we go madonna. back you know? oh my madonna high school madonna. Madonna. nice <laughs> Andrew, hello Thanks yeah, and, and you know, it's funny. Ralph just wrote that we had a revelation, that I had a revelation with a tree. You know, Joe, th th it's funny he said that because when you said that you, you, you had a connection with a flower, let's say, Joe, I'm going to tell you a crazy story, but I walked with my little guy and through the park that's in my neighborhood, I saw a magnolia tree on the other side. And when I stopped and I looked at this thing, Joe, I have to tell you, man, I, 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 I heard this tree talk to me. People are going to read the, listen to this and go, well, maybe you should lay off the weed if you heard the tree <laughs> talk to you. But, but the truth is, Joe, is that first of all, there's no weed. But secondly, it's about that connectedness. And, and, you know, again, there was so much to unpack. You're going to have to listen to this over and over again because there's so much to really unpack about what you said. But you talked about, you know why there's love? Because we are all connected. We all come from the same place. And when I talk about this connectedness with this tree, that's what it felt like, Joe. Nice. It felt like I was as one with the universe. So... I mean, go back and look at this show, guys. Make you make sure that you go back and you listen to this show because I'll tell you, man, there's a lot of shit going on in 90 minutes. And you, do you believe it, Joe? We're approaching 90 minutes already. You know what, Mel? It doesn't even feel like it. Not even close, man. I'm having a blast, and I just want to share about that tree experience you had. Nature's alive, and nature talks to us when we when we when when we internally feel that energy coming from it yeah. Absolutely. that's why i love nature i love taking walks in nature i walk with three beautiful beautiful souls um um and we walk we walk in nature and we were walking almost every night and they're they're beautiful beautiful ladies they they help me and i hope i help them we have great conversations uh yeah and you know when you're in touch with that nature and you've got a bird flying in front of you got some you know a butterfly coming in front of you those are all those are all messages love love it's all around it's everywhere no doubt. just take a moment for yourself to accept the fact that you deserve it because a lot of the time i didn't think i deserved it yeah that's powerful joe 
our friend Umberto writes, God bless, it's great you're talking about it because it will help someone else who thought they were alone or nobody understands. It starts with a connection. And that's exactly it, Umberto. I really appreciate you writing that because that's what this show is about. It's about talking to people who have made transformations in their life, talking about their passions with the hope that somebody's going to connect with and say, that's what I'm talking about. Yep. Thanks, Umberto. Awesome. Awesome, Joe. I, I can't say enough. I, I, I am truly, uh, I'm blessed. I, I feel so much better. Um, Umberto from Jane oh, and Shepard. I know. I know exactly who you are, brother. There you go. See? Jane I and Shepard you, represent. My man. My man. <laughs> Thank you, bro. Thank you. Um, I just have to say, Joe, that what an absolute honor. I was feeling low and your energy inspired me today. And so thank you for, for sharing your light with me and with all of our friends here. I uh, want to shout out to Kimmy Smiles. Thank you, Kimmy, for being here today. Very Thanks, sweet Kim. of you. Love thank you, you for, all the, for all the chat. And Joe, thank you for taking 90 minutes out of your day so that you can be here with us and be with all of our friends. i got to give a shout out to my girl. I love her too, Joe. The Rum K Queen, Christine. Uh, thanks. She says she writes, thank you so much for sharing your life's journey with us. You appreciate it. I just want to share one last thing before we head off. Okay. Yeah, man. Please. So it, this is something that really used to hit home for me and it still does. And this is just to show people who are suffering, reach out to anybody. So there was, there was an addict just at its lowest end sitting in a hole, just sitting in a hole. And uh, this just to show you how People who are not ready to accept or, or, or to give give themselves and people who are. So there was a priest who walked by this hole and what's wrong, my son? What's wrong, my son? And the, the addict says, I can't do this anymore. Somebody please help me. I'll pray for you, my son. He walked away. Then a firefighter came by and nothing against firefighters. God bless you all. You guys are freaking heroes. Uh, but to understand the addict, one must understand the addict. And walks by and he says, can I do anything to help you? I don't know what to do anymore. I'll go get a ladder. I'm going to come and help you. And then an addict came by in recovery. And the addict stopped and looked in the hole. And he, and he looked at the addict suffering. And the addict said, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to get out. So the, addict, the recovering addict jumps in the hole. And the addict looked at him and said, what are you doing? He says, what do you mean? What am I doing? He said, uh, I've been where you're sitting. And someone came to get me. Now I come to get you. So we're going to get out of here together. Make the call always. Don't make the Reach wrong call. Help. Reach out for help. Yeah. Mal, Absolutely beautiful. You are a beautiful human being. I thank you for all you do. Thanks, brother. God bless you, my friend. We're going to put you backstage, Joe, as I do my final thoughts. But uh, stay tight and uh, and we'll, uh, we'll get back to uh, you soon, okay? Love you, bro. Love you, Joe. Thank you all. Fuck, I thought I was going to shed a few tears there, folks. I thought uh, he was going to get me emotional with that story because uh, that's what we need to do, my friends. Let me raise my voice. Let me get your attention. We are here to do only two things, to remember who we are so that we can help others remember who they are. That's our journey. That's it. He has a friend who has a Ferrari, and the only joy he got was jumping into it and bringing it home. And then after that, that joy dwindled away. Because it's not about what external. It's not about the external that makes us happy. It's about the love and the hope that we reach and that we look at inside of ourselves. So wherever you are in the world, I'm grateful. Grateful that you had an opportunity to be with me and Joe today. That you took this message. That you'll take this message and take the energy of this room. Let it infuse your aura. And go and share love and hope with your families and your communities. Because that's what we're here to do. So I want to thank Joe for taking the time to be with us. All my friends, 
that we're watching today. Kimmy Smiles, uh, Putin Nation, of course. I love you, bro. Uh, Rum K Queen, boop, boop, to my Jamaican girl. Sandra Mio, love you, girl. And to the rest of you, Umberto and those that were new to the station, thank you for subscribing and thank you for being here. 416 Raf in the house, just Rob Official. Much love, brother. Next week on the Coffee and Biscotti Show, another hot topic. Racism in our world. Racism in our police force. Next week on the Coffee and Biscotti Show, a former Canadian amateur boxing heavyweight champ, Calvin Lawrence, retired RCMP cop. He's going to be here talking about racism and what it was like to be a black man uh, living a life in the force. So you're going to want to stay, come, come around and join me next week at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Our friend Josh says, stick around, folks, as we raid to stick around to come with us on the raid today. We're off to see a great DJ and the owner of an actual coffee company, BRL Coffee Company, Mr. Neil Jackson. So stick around, my friends. From all of us here at the Coffee and Biscotti Show, love and hope, my friends. Love and hope. Crew Mel signing off. Peace. <laughs>